Hey, Jeff Redding here coming to you from the fabulous Bop Stop in Cleveland, Ohio tonight with my special guest, Bridget Reckless, who, when she's not moonlighting at behind the bar here at this marvelous club, is half of a great duo of rock musicians out of Youngstown, Ohio, called Super Babes, yes. along with her drummer, Ann Rock. Welcome, yes. you, Bridget. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, how familiar are you with the Youngstown Cleveland Pipeline as far as music is concerned? I actually, I'm probably not that familiar, um, but more recently moving to Cleveland has kind of, you know, helped me learn a bit more and uh, of who recognizes who or who comes from where and all, everything like that. So, so I'm getting more familiar, probably. Well, super babes aren't psychedelic like the human beings were, and they're not as hard rock as Left End were, um, because they were just off the hook anyway. <laughs> but for a two-piece band, Bridget plays guitar, um, they rock pretty hard. And so how did the, how did you come about, you know, putting the whole thing together? And, yeah, yeah. So I'll go back a little bit, but also, actually, since you mentioned Left End, that is one I do know of because my bandmate, uh, Ann Rock, loves them. Um, she's a huge fan of Dennis's, and she grew up with them, That's basically. That's Dennis T. Menace, by the way. Yes, yeah, sorry. Yes, yeah, sorry, Ann, sorry. No. <laughs> um, she's a huge fan. Her, her dad also... Uh, is a musician, plays drums, so she kind of grew up around a lot of that, um, and that's how I have learned of, of those influences. Um, so funny you mentioned Left End, because that is one I do definitely know of, um, via my bandmate, but yeah, so the Super Babes is a venture that uh, took like many a turn, actually. We'd never really had the idea of being a duo at first, um, so a lot of people will be like, oh, are you influenced by duos? And Technically, no, but as we grew into that, we kind of got there. But So Ann and I met on a different music project um, in Youngstown, and it was more of a recording project than it was a live setting. So we were jumbling up different area musicians, and you were, you know, the idea was to play with someone new, um, so you're doing cover songs or, or whatever, and kind of jumble up different bands mm -hmm. to make a new band. Anyway, Ann was on the production side of that, um, kind of more running the schedules, um, doing a lot of the, the engineer work and things within the studio too, and, uh, you know, dispersing songs and organizing people who would be a good fit for each other and everything. Uh, and I was singing on a track for that. And that's how we met. We clicked instantly as friends and we were just having like a rowdy girl summer, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, it was just really fun. And, um, <laughs> That project ended up falling through, and um, I don't know, it just didn't happen, just didn't work out. Some other, some a whole other backstory. Well, but, you know, it's yeah, hard to roll, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot to that one, but um, <clears throat> but so when Anne left the project, I left the project too. Like other people were dispersing, and um, it just like solidified our friendship a little more, I think. And during that time, she wasn't really playing with anybody in particular. She would you know, play with other various bands, maybe open mics or fill in or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, something like that. But uh, she wasn't really solidified in a band at the time, and neither was I. I was coming out of a cover band, and I was doing a lot of solo acoustic um, shows and, you know, bar gigs and patios and blah, blah, blah. And I was writing a lot of my own stuff at that time, too, but when you're playing a lot of those shows... You know, people want to hear covers. People want to hear covers. Yeah, people stuff. want to hear covers. Yeah. And Songs they're familiar with. Yeah, and so I would do a pretty good um, mix of, of all of that. But uh, Anne came to an acoustic show um, just to kind of show face, you know, as well as my friend, but originally through that first project. And she's like, oh, I really like your originals. And I was like, oh, my gosh, thank you. I'm like, oh, thank you, thank you. And then we had our Rowdy Girl Summer. And by the end of that, we both, like, <laughs> it was so silly. Um, 
I wanted to form a band again, definitely more original based music, so did she. We had talked about, you know, various goals, and it, it was kind of like asking someone out or something. I was like, so I wanted to start a band again, and would you like be in a band with me? And she's like, I was gonna ask you the same thing. I don't know, it was really cute, but um, so she, she Anne actually had the, the idea for the Super Babe. So um, I even remember her being like, Oh, I have a whole idea already laid out, and I was like, Oh, wow, cool, like let's hear about it. Yeah, like let's hear about it. I would love to hear your idea. And she's like, Well, let me write it down for you so you could see it the name of it of what I want it to be called and she's like I think it just has a bit more punch to it if you take a look at it and you'll see if you like resonate with it and I was like oh okay great and so I opened the paper and it says the super babes and I was like I don't know what this is but I'm in like I'm in I'm in I'm in um, and so as we got to talking about it uh, our vision was more like to be the runaways similar to the runaways where maybe four or five piece mm -hmm. um, made up of women uh, if we you know primarily if we could um, and it just never kind of landed that way we had auditioned uh, different people through the course of trying to write stuff and learning covers just to kind of again solidify a sound and, and whatnot um, it just never happened and then one day we were scrolling on Facebook and someone had tagged themselves as like the super babes or the original super babes or something like that and we were like wait a minute because some of them auditioned for us so we're like no wait 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 so we're like let's just solidify the page well, these were those were people that had actually so, some uh or were friends with and wanted to play with the i don't know there's a whole there's a whole thing or drama but um <laughs> Rock and roll. <laughs> rock and roll drama. But drama. Yeah, <laughs> imagine that in the theatrics of music. Um, but anyway, so we were like, let's just solidify it. Like, let's get the Facebook page going. Let's get the name out there so we can definitely keep it. That's all right. You know, that was our idea. And we wanted to be sure people knew that it was us. And, um, and then we kind of just... Again, our friendship just got stronger and stronger and stronger. And now we're like family, sisters, I don't know, basically married to each other. However, like, however, the strongest connection you could think sure, of. Sure, sure. Um, and so it kind of became just that that's like us. That's our baby. That's our, you know, uh, our music, our song babies, our band, our image, everything we built and created. So we were like, I think we should just, I think we should just stick together as a duo um, and we definitely agreed upon that and from there it's just been up 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 and uh, you know it's been awesome to try to yeah get that big theatrical sound of say left end or, or something of, of that nature um, with just the two of us so we've really pushed each other in our musical abilities um, I mean she has two like music degrees and she's very schooled and skilled don't get me wrong but when you you know you play in other parts of other bands for so mm -hmm. long you're not you know so for example she wasn't as used to like lead singing or doing so many higher harmonies because the bands she was in before were like no this is your part and sing that you know mm -hmm. and I was like well, I don't I don't do that like I don't like to do that I think if, I don't know whatever if you sit in a certain register and it sounds good like that's like well then I'll pick a different harmony I don't know or, or something like that and then as we started writing and I would get a little more riffy with guitar stuff um, which I didn't used to do um, I played acoustic for so long that moving back to electric was kind of um like a whole new thing for me again and uh but yeah she would push it like oh no that sounds good like I like that like you know how about we add this behind it I'm like oh wow no one's ever I don't know pushed me in that in that realm either as far as like oh no you are good you are a guitar player you can do this like mm -hmm. you know and uh, same for her and so we really just worked very hard on, on solidifying that fullness um so yeah that's I don't know kind of where we're at now <laughs> yeah and then same with the image that has gotten bigger and uh, more yeah, colorful. I was going to ask and, and, about that. Uh, yeah. Because uh, when, when, when I got to see you at the Rock Hall, uh, first of all, that must have been a real thrill to it be able to play day. at the Rock Hall. It was a magical day. We talk about it all the time. I, I will never forget that day. Yeah, yeah I can imagine yeah. not. And and you are, you, you know, you do have a very colorful thing. You've got this mystical thing going and everything. And, you know, as, as Anne goes around and does the blessing to the crowd yes, and stuff yeah. and bring everybody, wraps everybody in. Yes, the scene. she really sets it for us. 
um, that was newer too. That that happened within the last, I'd say, year. Maybe we started writing new music and um, presenting it the last year or so. And uh, yeah, so we we used to do a long, long like a while back when we were first starting out. We would do outfits or different themes or something like that for shows or just pretty mm-hmm. theatrical eccentric people in general um it didn't seem to to stick like people weren't really they'd be like i don't get it and i'm like what do you get i said rock and roll i don't i'm like okay we're, we're both just like stunned like all right i guess we'll just keep doing what we do and we did for a while and then we kind of were like oh what could make us more uh I don't know, United or, you know, United when you walk in, people are like, oh, that's them. That's the super, mm-hmm. you know. And we're like, well, I don't know. I guess we're we're both, like I said, kind of schooled musicians in a way. Like, sh- she has music degrees. I was a theater kid, a choir kid my whole life. So we're like, maybe just the all black move. <laughs> like, seems like uh, a thing. I don't know. So we would wear, like, black shorts, black t-shirt. Kind of have our own take with like jewelry and things, but that seemed to make us look more like twin like, you know. Mm-hmm. And people were like, oh, that, that's them. And we kind of just stuck with that for a long time. It was easy, it was neutral, you know. Um, and then we we're, as our sound evolved, <laughs> but as our sound elevated and our, our theatrics with our, our banter, maybe, I don't know, with each other and, and the crowd and things. Um, and our songs got a little more ribbon, I guess you could say. And we're like, okay, what what do iconic rock goddesses look like? Like, what does that look like to us? You know, how, how do we want to present that? And so that's where we started doing a lot more research on you know, where to find clothes or something, or like, you know, stage-type outfits. And we came across, uh, and came across a... A shop online that does custom orders so those are custom outfits that, oh, wow. yeah we got um tailored for us um you know you pick a pattern you pick the fringe color and the whole nine so um we decided that was the best um for both of us because we have such very different styles it's you know i mean we're very different very very different people in general like our our personalities are clothing styles our speaking styles our backgrounds like uh, it's kind of funny but and yet, it just like works you gel so well oh I, I it, it is easy it's like the easiest thing ever basically I and mean, i think we've had maybe like one disagreement and i wouldn't even call it that i think like you know i was probably like hungry and cranky or something and i was like i need to go home like I, you know like i really i really we really don't run into a, a lot of problems like that. Be, I think just because we really do care about each other so much, you know. But, um, yeah, but so that's kind of how the outfits came into play, and it just really made us feel like empowered, you know. Uh, it was empowering for us. It seems to make other people feel empowered too to wear, you know, wear what they want to wear. Um, be, well, yeah, be bright, like be eccentric, be what you want. Like we wear these headdresses too that I. Um, that I made, they're like floral kind of headband-like uh, pieces, and a lot of people, they would draw a lot of attention for sure, and some people would be like, why are you wearing that, and we're like, what do you mean, because you wear whatever you want, like, I don't know, because they're pretty, and it's a festival, like, <laughs> yeah, and why not, I made it, like, I just wanted to, I made us each one, it's fun, like, well, oh. see, that's the thing, <laughs> it's like, visually, you present as, as, like, a glitter, glam kind of persona, yeah. and yet, but the, the sound, sound is, it's like, like a own, Thing. It's it's, right, it's very yeah. rough. It's not really David Bowie, sure. it's not T Rex, it's not Mata Vupal. Yeah. It's, it's rock and roll it, for well, sure. It's Youngstown rock and roll. It is, it's, yeah, yeah, it's it definitely, really is. definitely yeah, Youngstown rock, rock and roll with our own, own uh, yeah, yeah, kind of influences. Uh, but definitely, okay. that's kind of how, uh, yeah, the outfits, outfits came, came with the sound, and, and, and as we evolved, we kind of add to it. So we started writing those other songs. And the show that you've seen, we've been we've been doing um, that kind of style of show for about the past year now, I would say. And Anne's a very spiritual, um, gifted, healing type person as well. So um, she 
has always been that's what we joke about that a lot like Anne Rock and Bridget Reckless like no that is literally our friendship like Anne is the rock of this group but like I'm a little wild I don't know we're just yeah the, the yin and yang thing again but um, yeah but that's what makes things work a lot yes more oh, often than not oh absolutely and um but so she does a lot of healing and Reiki and things like that too and um <clears throat> she would do like cleansing or um, you know cutting our cords like maybe for us before shows and um, we did have a moment where we would yes kind of people would like catch us doing it and they're like what are you doing and she'd be like oh do you want some like they're all cleansing too and then it kind of just evolved into this where we'd like incense and stuff on stage to set our mood and our tone and, and for everyone else too but um, I don't know, again, it was very much meant to be a for our comfortability thing at first. I do that when yeah. I, when I play. I yeah, a lot of people do, or, if, you know, some people pray beforehand or, or whatever, you know, individually people yeah, want to do. Yeah, I almost always like this burning whenever I, you know, like even just recording at home. Yeah, know, yeah, it's, it's like, nice to really set that tone, you know, and um, so eventually, I, I don't know, she was kind of, she, she got more into it, like, every couple shows, you know? So she would start like on stage and do, you know, cleanse me, cleanse her, cleanse the stage, or whatever. And then it started getting like cooler and cooler. Cause like, you know, she got more comfortable with it or people were more receptive to it maybe. Um, but now people like line up, like people line up at the stage and she like will have to go out in the crowd and do like it. like at the Rock Hall. Like at the Rock Hall. So she, she is, um, you know, very uh, observant, I guess, or I don't know how you would say that, but she can pinpoint like when it's gonna happen pretty well. So she'll like get out into the crowd and kind of just do that and get a line going and uh, or, or you know whoever's comfortable with it. We rarely have people. I think only one time someone was like, "No, I don't know what that means," and then eventually they came back and, and did it anyway. And you know what I mean? And, uh, it's a lovely, you know, just for good energy and for uh, you know yeah to set that and inspire people and. Uh, yeah, so I love it, and I think I we had too. one one show where it kind of was like that. Yeah, so that one person was like, "No, I don't know," and then the whole crowd kind of just seemed like I don't I don't know. It was weird. It was just a rough. It was a tough crowd. I don't know what happened. And I remember her having a conversation with me like, "Should we still do that?" And I was like, "Oh yes, we should absolutely still do that. Like I need it. If anything, I like when you do it." And uh, yeah, that was the only time in that whole year. I think we had that one weird day. Um, but yeah, I don't know, that, that kind of came with the growth of our sound and our personal life ventures and, and things, and we kind of incorporate it into our set now, and uh, yeah. So, so now you've got an album out? Um, we have an EP out, yes, that we did in, uh, we released it in 2019, um, and then obviously 2020 happened and it kind of, yeah. Yeah, I, the world I, fell apart. Yeah, as, as everyone, everyone knows, knows, as uh, happened to everybody. But uh, we were on a pretty good trajectory then too. So it kind of always, you know, obviously changes your goals a little bit and had to rework some things. And but within that time, that is where we did build up our our technique, our sound, our outfits, the stage show, the whole nine. So it was kind of I don't know, kind of worked out in the end um, for us. But yeah, 2019, we released our EP. We are the Super Babes. Uh, that was uh, recorded in Youngstown at Peppermint Productions, um, run by Gary Ramey and uh, Left End, actually, uh, used to record there. So that was another big goal for us to get in there and, and work with him and do it live and raw sounding. So very organic, you know, rock and roll is kind of what we were going for that way when we released it. You would, you would know what you were booking or you would know what you were going to see. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people really overdub a lot of things and that's great. And I would, you know, we'd love to maybe try that a little more on our, you know, other songs that we're working on. But that we just wanted to be our introductory, like, no, this is us. This is what we sound like. This we're song, doing this live. Yeah, we're so doing this it live. This is how we do things. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so that that was our, our first EP put out. And we do have other songs we are working on. They're just not done yet and uh obviously my move to cleveland has <laughs> you know uh we've, we've been, been hike to young now. yeah so we've had to just get better with scheduling things out like that um you know otherwise we have been playing shows through the year and, and whatnot but uh yeah we gotta get back and finish finish up uh, everything in the studio so then hopefully we'll have 
I'm not sure how we're going to do that, to be honest, maybe. <laughs> but I'm, I'm not, not sure yet. yet. I'm not sure yet. So I'm not sure if it'll be a full length or another. I don't know. I guess we're just still working on, on that. But we do play the new songs out. Um, they're just not released yet. Right. Say, so, so I, as I said, you know, we're sitting here at the Bob Stop um, after um, an event called Brent Kirby's 10 by 3. Um, which is a curated singer-songwriter and or band open mic night. And this is where I was introduced to Bridget and to her music. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your solo acoustic stuff that you do? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so like I said, when I had met Anne, I was already playing a lot of solo acoustic gigs. And that is kind of more my my roots, I guess theater and things like that too, but um, as far as guitar playing and songwriting, I, I was very much way, like way more into the, the singer-songwriter-esque type of thing, or pop music too, um, so although that's very produced, um, when you look up like the songwriters and who wrote them and uh, you listen to their demos or something, you, you just get that rawness again, yeah. that, that uh, clarity of like the lyrics and kind of more the tone of the song in its original form um, and I just have always loved that and I've loved taking pop songs and scaling them back to their more you know basic base, roots yeah basic roots uh, of it and um, I got a guitar when I was ooh, how old was I I think my first guitar I think I was like 13 13 or 14 14 maybe, and I remember asking for it for Christmas because I wanted to write songs. I was already in choir, I was already in theater, I was writing a lot of poetry, and I would always hear vocal melodies um, in my head, but I didn't really know how to play instruments. Um, choir gave you a good background to learn structure, stru some structure, notes, or how to find a note on a piano or whatever, but you know, it still wasn't really, I, I don't know, that wasn't fluid in that, I guess, or, or, you know, like I couldn't play piano, and I was like, well, I either want to take piano or I want to play guitar, and I really just swayed way more towards guitar, and so um, for Christmas one year, I did get my first acoustic, and um, started taking lessons minimally back then, um, and then just all throughout school, I would, I would do songwriting contests, or, um, you know, I went to, after high school, I went to Columbia College Chicago, uh, for music business is where I started actually uh, until I came back home. But uh, I would do a lot of like songwriter nights out there too. And uh, and after moving back up here, obviously it was putting me in, in this place. Uh, found this job and it introduced me to this crowd, uh, which is amazing. I love everything about this night. Obviously, it's very much my my roots. So it's nice yeah. to meet people like that. And um, but anyway, yeah. So I, I was writing songs since, yeah, middle school, high school, um, and kind of just continued it all through after I graduated college. I, you know, my mom got me another, like, PA system, and I really started gigging and uh, getting it out there, trying to record, trying to do this. I actually never ended up releasing any of that uh, music, so there's just lots of random demos everywhere of, and, and my, of next my question, solo actually, stuff. Um, my next question was going to be, are you planning at some point to release? I, I am, yes. So I actually, within the last few years, have also met another friend um, out of Youngstown, um, just through like jam nights and working, uh, work life, you know. Mm -hmm. But he, I'm featured on some of his music that is released, but he's also helping me record some of, of my own, my solo stuff too. So I'm hoping to get that out, yeah. Um, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't know when, obviously, <laughs> when all these uh, all these projects. But um, yeah, so I, I would write a lot of. I, I try to write uplifting stuff sometimes, but it was just definitely my release and and definitely my form of like my I don't know, therapy or, or whatever. As most music is to many, yeah, well, I was just gonna as say, music is to many, not just musicians, just people in general. But. Um, yeah, so I, I would write a lot of, I guess I call them sad girl bops. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, they can be different than the, than the band, obviously. Um, and although I'm in a, a lovely work environment with my bandmate, I just, you know, we, we know what we're going for with that sound, with that group, with that, uh, you know. And we have played a few of them, actually. Uh, she's helped 
me compose some of them or put drums on them and things like that. But we, you know, I, are, are they for the super babes? It's like, I don't know, that's such an uplifting, powerful movement type of uh, type of project that sometimes they just don't fit you know? right right and uh uh yeah so i don't know i've been having fun kind of this past year exploring those and getting them structured out a little different and maybe yeah get someone on a piano or this or that so i do hope to get those out there but um i do play them out when i get a chance to uh, on my own so well, that's great so um, I want to thank you for for taking the time to, to do this. Yeah, and, thank uh, you. This is Bridget Reckless from the Super Babes. Um, they've got a website. They've got they're on Facebook. Oh, yeah. You can find them all over the place. Are you on Spotify? We are. Yeah. They're on Spotify. Go check them out. Listen to them. Buy their music. They really rock. Bridget, Thanks. thank you so much. Thank you so much. Cool. Cool. Ooh, this fireplace is awesome. I know, isn't it?